Okay, I just gave you guys a list of square roots that you were easily able to solve. I want you guys to right now look at the square root of 81 and tell me some facts that you know about it. 81 is... It's equal to? 9 squared. And what is a related fact that's the opposite of that? <laughs> Are those related facts? Yes. Okay. We love our invisible ones in math, but I'm going to tell you right now there's an invisible two here. Uh, dun, dun, dun. It's right here. Yep. If there is nothing there, we know it's a square root. What some of you might see as new is that this could also have a different number here. Yep. It's called the index. We'll talk more about the vocabulary of a radical tomorrow. But the answer changes. When this isn't an invisible 2 here, it's no longer a square root. When it is a square root, we're looking for two numbers, or a number that when I multiply it by itself twice, becomes what's inside the root. This time, we're looking for a number that if I multiply it four times, gives me 81. I heard it. Three. This is equal to 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 equals 81. Or 3 to the what power? Trying to see if there's another... Yeah, I'm trying to remember. We could do 64. Does 64 have a cube root, Miss Bryant? Yeah. Okay. So a square root of 64 would be 8, but when I have a 4 in the index here, what number is going to be our solution? I'm hearing two different numbers. What is it possible? If I do 2 to the 4th power, do I get all the way up to 64? If I do 4 to the 4th power, do I get to 64? So because this is this, this is this. Wait. No, that's not right. Is it? No, you're right. Hold on, hold on. It's Five supposed to be times four, four times four times four. Times four. That's wrong. That's wrong. It's supposed to be cube root sixty-four. Eight. Three. Yeah. Let's leave this off as an example and do one that I know works. <laughs> the mistake of making up notes as we go. How about this? A number that when I multiply it three times gets me to 27. 3 times 3 gets me 9, times another 3 gets me 27. So this is equal to 3 to the third power. See if you can find solutions for these two.
The first one is four. 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 The second one is two. two. We're going to go backwards. I'm going to give you guys, going back to 64, and I'm going to tell you that it's not going to be equal to four. I want this to be equal to, or um, I want this to be equal to two. So I want you to come up with what number would be here in the index. How many times are we multiplying two to get to 64? Five. <laughs> if I'm wrong and you copied off me, that means you're wrong too. <laughs> hey, I tried making you all copy off me when I was wrong. Back to our conversation on mistakes earlier, right? Mm -hmm. We all make them. If I know that 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and I also know that 8 times 8 is 64. Can I use this information to find out what number is going to go in that part of my radical? Yes. So I get a 6. I would like you guys to take the last couple of minutes to put down in a summary what your what you've learned today about beyond square roots. When we call square roots, we can call it like beyond like rooted. Cube roots. Cube roots. It's called and a radical. Like quad quadrilateral. They're all called radicals. Oh. But yes, if we have a three in there, it would be a cube root. And then when we have a four, that would be like quadrilateral root. Mm, we usually like say to the fourth power. Or an index of four when it's in the root. Uh, it is 10 after. I would like you guys to save these notes for tomorrow. Please leave the glue and scissors on your table for third period. Who I have not seen this week yet. I have not been here for third period at all this week. It's so weird. Hey! Is Owen just collecting all the pencils? trying to do it should have been a cube root. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye. Natalie, water bottle. Sorry, I'll put it away.
Or you could do it tomorrow, Miguel. Okay, bless you. Don't get comfortable. We're changing seats. Oh man. Hi, nice to see you guys. We're moving seats, don't get anything out yet. I typed your name yesterday. Are you playing football? I typed the football roster yesterday, alphabetical order. The yearbook is almost done, Bryson. Really? Who's doing the watch Um. Gosh, I'm trying to remember. We're, we've got a page saved for um, Culture Fair. That's kind of our big holdup. We're waiting for tonight, but it's due tomorrow. So the only words going on that page is Culture Fair. <laughs> Guys, we're going to change seats, so don't take anything out. I'm breaking up the dream team over there. No! Well, actually, I don't know if I am. I'm doing this randomly. You're doing this randomly? I am. That was giving me a look like, do not let Bryson sit next to me. Save me from that fate. The boyfriend. The couples. I'm serious. I'm ready for lunch. I'm hungry. I'm ready to go back home. Hi. Hi. I have not seen you guys all week. It's so weird. I know, right? Monday, you spent like half your day in here and I wasn't here. Is it just me? She smells like wood chips. What are you talking about? She smells like wood chips. No, no. Oh my gosh, it's bringing back to me memories. That's when I saw the wood chips. Do we have a lot of people missing? No, there's a bunch of people coming from the portables, right? Yeah. I don't think 80% of the class is in the portables. Bye, Bryson. You too. Tables eight and nine, I would like, I'm going to tell you which, which table to go to. So, Charlie, Nikki, Adam, you're at one. I'm going to keep. you to join Hallie and Julie at table three. I'm moving Sierra to table one. Henry, you're going to table two. 
to be extra when you Amina, table four. This table needs to move that way a little bit. Lynn, are you really not moving? I'm right here. Oh, you did move. Okay. Nikki didn't move, though. Funny. Okay, uh, people who like to pass things out, I've got three things that need to go. Come on, come on, come on. Perfect. Everybody needs one. This is a struggle. One more. Uh, please get out your notebooks and a pencil to write with. Again, you need your notebook, something to write with, and these three papers. And focus up front, we're going to start with a vocabulary video. to one of the very first things that we put in here, the mathematician's toolbox. And I'm giving you today, we'll be gluing this into the section of our notebook, a list of prime numbers below 100. These two lists are the same. 
they're just formatted differently. I want you to take a look at the numbers that are there and just think to yourself, what do you notice about the numbers? They're all... And we'll discuss in a moment. At your table, share what you notice about the numbers on these tables. Okay, I'm going to spin the spinner and I want to hear some thoughts from a random person. What do you notice about the prime number list of uh, numbers under 100? Bow. And I don't know where people are. I keep looking for you in the old spot. Bow, what, what's something you've noticed about this list? So he's giving me basically the definition of a prime number. The numbers on here only have a factor of themselves in one, right? Okay, what is, is something else that you've noticed? Where did Alexis get sorted to as I moved tables? Oh, you didn't change seats. Okay, Juan. Okay, so the only even number on here is a two. two, because what happens with two is a factor with all the other even numbers. Think about all the other even numbers. Can all the other even numbers be divided by two? And one, and themselves, and something else, right? At least. So two is our only even because it becomes a factor of all the numbers beyond itself. What's missing that you kind of expect to see on this list? Why one? Let me, let me rephrase that question. Why is one not on this list? And think back to what Bao shared with us at the beginning. Talk at your table. Why do you guys think one is not here? Okay, I'm going to go back to spinning and I want to hear some, it, you can say what you heard somebody else say or what you think. It's never easy. Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Nikki. What did you hear at your table? Why would one not be included on this list? Because one is being multiplied by the number itself. I'm going to remind you guys of the definition of a prime number. It only has two factors, one and itself. How many factors does one have? One. So it only fits part of that definition, true? The one and it's, I, I know, they call one the loneliest number. Charlie's like really sad for one because it's like ostracized off this list all by itself. It one is. feels special. Let's just. Okay, I'm better. You can be the one. Are you better now? I'm better now. Okay. Please go to the half sheet you picked up that says prime factorization. And Nikki and Sierra, if you see me go off screen while I'm doing this, let me know. I'm recording for people that got pulled out for testing last period and I forgot to record it. Um, I'm going to tell you at this point, I feel like what we're doing today is review. Am I correct? You guys knew about prime numbers. You knew a lot of the things that you've been telling me. Yes? You've also done this before. You've, you've done factor trees. We just saw them in the vocabulary video. We're going to factor the number 120. And I want to read through the list of bullets for the factor tree method. 
you write the given number to begin. We're going to draw branches underneath. That's why it's a tree, because those are branches. Um, and we're going to choose two numbers that multiply to give us that given number. What are two numbers you guys know would equal? 60 and 2. Okay, let's do 60 and 2. I like to circle it when I've got a tree branch that ends in a prime because that means that branch is finished. What am I going to do with the 60? What, what numbers do we want? Okay, so I'm going to do 30 and 2. Which of those numbers gets circled? Which of those numbers gets branches? What numbers would you guys like to do for 30? 15 and 2. Put them in 2 and or, uh, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. There's lots of possibilities. But you guys have been choosing things that give us a prime. And now I've got 15. What should I do? 5 and 3. <laughs> it's over in that we've got all primes, but now we need to list what we found. 120 is equal to how many twos? Three. And a three and a five. And that is a correct way of writing it. We saw similar to this in vocabulary when they were factoring that number 32. But in algebra, we like to write this with a shortcut method, recognizing that we know how to use exponents. How many twos are there? Three. So I'm going to write 2 as its base with its exponent of 3 times 3 times 5. They mean the same thing. Agreed? Okay. As a visual learner, I prefer this other method I'm going to show you because for me it just comes out neater. Um, this is a nice, neat tree because we kept finding primes as we went. But you guys have seen them where they get really messy, right? This one does not get mess messy. Um, we're going to make a birthday cake. Well, really, it's going to be an upside down birthday cake. So that uncle that everybody's like, oh, there he goes at the wedding. Um, I'm actually going to start with the number at the top. This is why it's upside down. When we're doing this, we're going to end up basically dividing. And I'm going to use an upside down division. Picture that as like the, how, the little garage thing upside down, right? Um, but the thing I'm going to divide by every single time is a prime number. So I'm going to start with 2. 120 divided by 2 gives me 60. And here's my second layer of the cake. What's a prime number I can divide 60 by? 2. I heard a 3. Let's do a 3. Yeah. I know. We could have done 2, but we've been doing 2 a lot. Uh, and then I've got 20. What's a prime number I can divide 20 by? Five. Let's do 5. Yeah. That gives me 4. Every time you think, what is a prime number I can divide that by? 2. And we're not finished until the last thing that goes on is the, the candle or the 1. And what's on the left side of my upside down cake? All my prime numbers. I don't have to worry about circling them as I find them in a factor tree. Now, I've also seen people do it this way where they put the big number that you're factoring at the bottom and they make the cake right side up. Do it however you like it. I just like working top to bottom. That's why I don't mind it being upside down. Do you see now that that does look like it's the division symbol? Yeah. And it's finished when you get the candle on top. And I don't need to divide the one because one is not prime, right? I still have two to the third power times three times five getting me 120. Just two different methods for finding the same thing. With that, we are going to fold the yellow booklet that you have. It has practice problems in it where you guys are going to get to practice factoring some numbers down to their primes.
Remember, fold it into eighths. Stealing my accomplishments. Okay, so I folded it in half, hot dog style, and then I'm going to fold it again and again until I get eights. The cut is the magical part. So once you're all here, I'll show you how to do the cut again because that's the thing people forget. While we're waiting, I'm going to put underneath the camera real quick. This is what your page is going to look like. You're going to glue the birthday cake method and the factory tree on the left. And you're going to put your primes and your practice booklet on the right. That's what the glue has been there for. Okay, for cutting, we're going to unfold it. And refold it hamburger style. So right now I can see four sections and I want you to have the title on the top. My cut goes through the folded side above the title and I'm just gonna cut across the top of the title page. Oh. Yep. And then it goes like this where you get that nice cool little diamond shape and you squish it together. Okay, I am gonna give you guys about 12 minutes to do this practice booklet and get things glued into your notebook before we move on to our next activity.